sweating. Talking on camera so nerve-wracking. For an experienced YouTuber. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Plant Mama Tatiana and today I'm gonna show you how to propagate a philodendron. Today I'm going to show you how I propagate this philodendron micans and I just want to show you how big it is. This is my roommate's philodendron. This is the top of it, okay? And look how freaking tall it is. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. <laughs> it's basically taller than I am. Can't get all of this on camera. Let me see if I can roll it up and just show you the amount of leaves on this. It has gotten so long. It's so tall, it's been vining like crazy, and it basically touches the floor when we have it hanging up here. It hangs all the way to the floor from the top of the chandelier and from the window when you put it in the window and hang it from there, it goes all the way to the floor. So I think it's time to finally propagate this and make a couple of new little cute philodendron plants. I'm going to be showing you a few different ways that you can propagate your philodendrons as well as pothos and other vining plants. There's a very, very similar way to propagate these, the same kind of strategy, if you will. And I'm going to go through everything you need to know about propagating. I'm going to start by just cutting about this much of the plant and just starting from there. Let me backtrack, actually. The most important thing to know about propagating is that you want to focus on the nodes. So let me just start with that. I don't know if you can see this, but basically nodes are these parts of the plants where new growth happens and roots can grow from there, leaves can grow from there, they're basically points of growth on your plant. They're really easy to find on a vining plant like this. It's similar with other trailing philodendrons as well as pothos plants, even hoyas, things like that, but you'll be able to see there are nodes like this. They kind of feel like little notches on the plant. Here's an example of one that doesn't have a leaf on it. Okay, that's one. Here's another one. They look like little notches. Sometimes you'll see aerial roots growing from there. Sometimes you'll see leaves. Basically, you want to focus on those areas because you want to make sure that you get a couple of nodes in your cutting when you take a cutting to propagate. Here, for example, there is an end here. There are two nodes right there. There are no leaves though, so you want to also make sure that you get a node and a leaf. That's basically the important part, just to remember. So a node and a leaf, here's the first one that I see with a node and a leaf. And you're going to want to cut right around that node and the leaf. Let's say I only wanted to take this one cutting. I'm going to take way more cuttings than this, but you just want to start with a pair of your scissors or shears or whatever and make sure to clean it with alcohol just to make sure that there's no bacteria or fungus or anything that you're spreading so I'm doing that now it's an important step okay so now when you have a clean scissor or shear you can start by cutting one of these and I like to cut at an angle but again I'm just showing you how I do one I'm gonna cut basically this whole thing right around here but here right now I have gotten a leaf and a node basically this is pretty useless right now. You can keep it if you want to and give your plant a chance to grow roots here as well. But really what you can do is just cut it again right there, making sure to get the leaf and the node. You can see that there's like a little bit of this aerial root forming. But basically that's the main thing to focus on when you take your cutting. Make sure you have a node and a leaf. What I'm gonna do is just cut all of these across I think I'm just gonna go for it. I can probably cut a little more than this, but let's just go with this for now. So I'm just going to snip, snip, snip. Did I miss any? Snip, snip, snip. Okay, so that is done. And here is what I have. These are all my cuttings. There's a lot of them, but basically we're gonna go through each individual vine so you all can see and take a singular leaf cutting for every single node. Okay, if I can untangle this, that is. And I'm just going to snip at all the endpoints. 
These here, this is a good example because this isn't a node, but what I was talking about before is like, this is useless to you. So you can just snip this and throw it away, put it in your compost pile, whatever. That will never grow anything. So snip, snip, don't need this, discard that. Okay, and then making sure I get a leaf and a node. So in this case where there are not as many leaves, I'm gonna keep nodes together because that increases the chances of this rooting. So I can just cut it like that and we'll keep this together as well. So all of these nodes are places where roots can grow. So while I do that, let me describe the two ways that we're gonna be propagating. So you can do water propagation and you can do soil propagation. So I'm gonna show you how I do water and I'm also gonna show you how I do soil. You know, I like to show you everything, but I personally prefer water propagation because I can keep track of the roots and everything that's growing and just see it. I like to see it and see what's going on. That's my personal preference. I like to see roots, but you can just stick these in soil as well and the plants will form roots. You just won't be able to see it and you need to be careful about making sure you water that enough just so it stays moist and you don't let it get too, too dry. <sighs> there are so many. If you're trying to make a big, full plant, you really want to take a lot of cuttings because that will allow you to have a full vining plant. In the case where you get a new leaf growing at the end, it kind of sucks because it's not super likely that that will continue to grow. Sometimes it's best to just leave it out because it will take up energy instead of focusing on growing roots. But I'm gonna keep this little bit together because you never know. I have had luck where the leaf does continue to grow from the propagation. So that's what we're gonna do. And sometimes I get lazy and I just don't want to cut all of the in-between stuff off. That's okay too, you can leave it. Okay, so here's a cool one. This has started to grow out into several different ones. So I'm actually gonna leave this as one thing together. And I think I might use this one as part of my soil propagation. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna leave this whole bit together. People don't wanna watch me cutting for 20 minutes. That's on them. That's really on them. They're a mistake. There are actually a couple of reasons you wanna propagate your plants other than producing new plants and getting free plants out of it. It actually helps promote thicker growth in a lot of vining plants. So for example, your vining plant, it's not going to be able to continue to grow from the end that you cut, right? but it does encourage branching and new points of growth at the previous node above it and at previous nodes along the vine that you've cut. So that's actually gonna encourage a thicker plant to grow from this plant, for example. So it's actually part of your natural care. It's pruning, that's what's gonna encourage them to grow. It's like getting a haircut and cutting off your split ends, you know, for thicker, fuller, healthier hair. Very similar with these vining plants. So that's one thing, and another thing too is instead of making new plants, you can take these extra bits and cuttings and plant them at the top of your plant to create a thicker, fuller plant. So as you can see right now, a lot of this growth is focused on one side, so we could really fill in some of the gaps here and to create a more 360 full plant. And I'm sure I'm gonna be overlaying what these roots look like once they grow to show you all of that. I haven't done any movie magic. This is the first time I'm propagating everything, so I don't have any already ready to go. Well, maybe I do, you'll have to wait and see. So I'm gonna collect all of the leaf cuttings and basically put all the leaves together. I'm just trying to get them all organized into one little bunch like this. You can totally do this with one or two cuttings. It's not a problem. This will definitely grow into a full plant just as a singular leaf cutting. But again, if you want that thick, full plant, this is what you need to do. A lot more leaves in here than I thought. This is gonna be very nice. Still collecting. You can see here, I might not even have enough room in my mason jar of water to put all of these, but I think they'll fit. This is probably the biggest plant I've ever propagated. So exciting. And again, you're not gonna get anything to grow out of these random, cuttings here, unfortunately. You can always try, it doesn't hurt to try if it has a node. I have certainly had success with little nodes growing out of nothing, but I'm not gonna waste my time. Okay, that's everything. 
All I'm going to do now, and maybe I should have had a thicker cup, but I think I can fit it. I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to just put them into this cup of water that I filled up to propagate. Here we go. So ooh, this is my mason jar full of cuttings. I'm making sure that all of the nodes are submerged in the water. That's where roots are going to grow. I've got some falling out, so just double check because there's a lot in here. So this one, for example, jump ship. So we're just going to shove it in, make sure all of the nodes are submerged and we want to make sure that the leaves are out of the water. If not, they'll rot. That's pretty much it with water propagation. You want to keep this in a warm spot that will be very, very helpful to you. Um, keep it warm, keep it in a sunny spot. They don't need tons of light to propagate. It's really that warmth that's important. And then you want to switch out the water or at least top off the water weekly if you can. Really, whenever you remember to do it, it will be okay. You can kind of let it go a little longer if you forget, but I would say focus on weekly or when the water gets down low because first of all, the water will run out. So you want to make sure that all the nodes stay covered. And then you also want to freshen up the water because this water can kind of get a little gross, grow a little algae sometimes, not great, can promote rotting. And you also want to give your cutting oxygen. That's very important that you continue to add fresh water so that there's a new source of oxygen supply for these plants. So that's basically it on the water propagation. Here is my mason jar full of cuttings. I will keep an eye on this and how the roots grow. Now I want to show you, actually I did kind of have a magic moment of what I had. So this here is a tiny little plant I had. This was actually one single leaf cutting that grew into this. So it's a couple months old. There was a leaf that had fallen off of this plant and instead of throwing it away, I just threw it in water and it grew roots, of course. And then this has actually also survived all of my DIY self-watering systems. I put this one into a plastic bag and it just thrived and grew in there. It loved the humidity. It's itty bitty and it has grown so long. So what I wanna do though is because this is not the cutest, I keep it like this in this little planter and it is pretty cute but it would be cuter if this were fuller so what i'm gonna do is take this out and show you how you could soil propagate without having to take these cuttings so i have a bigger thing of soil here just standard potting soil typically you don't want to up pot a plant from this tiny little thing into this thing but i know that this plant is going to grow very fast might as well give it the space. And then it likes to stay root bound. So I imagine that I'm going to keep it in this pot for a long time after. I don't really have anything smaller than this, so might as well make it big. And I'm also going to show you how I add in a little bit more of this cutting without roots to show you that that's possible as well. Just going to take this out of here. It was starting to get a little root bound. I don't know if you can see that. There are the roots. I need to get like a better automatic focus. I got dirt all over the ground. What's new? And I'm just going to plant this into this pot in the center, the part that already has roots, and just bury it in the soil. But I'm also, because I, like I said, I don't want such a singular vining plant, I'm going to wrap the plant around the soil, okay, stay with me, and make sure that all of the nodes are covered in soil. That's gonna encourage several new points of growth around these little node areas without having to take cuttings and doing all that. Any questions? Are you guys following me? I know, it's crazy. That's all we have to do. Again, I'm just gonna loop it around, looping it around. Maybe it'll be easier to loop and then show you what I end up with. And this is something that you can do with your actual plant. So here's an example, right? So I looped it around and now I'm just gonna bury all of the nodes into the soil. You just wanna make sure the leaves stay out of the soil and are above the soil basically. And I'm going to bury all of these roots. If you're having trouble with them staying down, you can use something like a bobby pin to kind of push in around the little vines here and kind of secure them to the soil. That's another trick that you can do if you don't want to take a cutting or if you have a plant that's already kind of full. You can take 
a bobby pin. I'll show you with this one. And you can secure, you could like pull up a little bit of these vines and you could kind of bobby pin parts of this plant down to encourage new points of growth for those roots because this plant loves to produce roots if you give it a chance. So this is what we call soil propagation, just putting everything directly into the soil and we will see how this grows. Hopefully I'll have a good update to overlay in this video. If not, definitely subscribe to my channel. I will be posting updates on all of my propagations and show you how these are growing. But trust me, this will work. I've done this before with many plants. And I'm gonna add in this little part too, because why not? It'll be more full. So I'm just gonna like loop it around like this basically and then bury this part. So it'll be a little bit easier. So here we are. I've got this going on and I'm gonna make sure to water this. That's very important. Speaking of these philodendron, let me give you a little care summary on them while we're at it. So this philodendron micans can actually do pretty well in lower light. So it obviously would like more of that medium to bright and direct light. It does really well and grows a lot. But if you don't have that situation, this philodendron was actually growing in this living room for a while, which only has north facing windows behind me. So it was getting pretty medium to low more like low indirect light for a long time and it still grew like crazy. It also seems to be pretty drought tolerant. I would say my roommate waters it every couple of weeks to once a month to whatever and once it gets really really dry you water it, let it drain from the bottom and it just loves that. So you can tell that this is getting dry, it's actually I need to water it, but when it starts to kind of get this leaf curl, let me see if I can show you one, it'll start to kind of fold in these leaves and curl in like that and that's a good indicator it needs water or of course test the soil with the moisture meter and you'll be able to tell that it's pretty light and might need some water. This plant is pretty low maintenance, it's very fast growing. I definitely recommend this plant if you are looking for a very fun, kind of colorful, a little bit of unique looking plant. I know that this plant is pretty popular right now so hopefully it should be pretty easy to find. I absolutely love this plant and it just keeps growing and keeps giving you all sorts of new leaves and growth and everything like that. Let me know if you have any questions with the water propagation or the soil propagation and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on how these plants grow and to stay updated on this philodendron overall. It's just so beautiful, I love it so much. It has been about five weeks since I took these cuttings and I wanna show you a little bit of a growth update. So on the water propagation, I have lots of roots growing. You can see them in the water and I even have some new points of growth and some new leaves, which is so awesome. I'm really excited. So this is a success. And on the soil propagation, it is doing really well too. I have new growth on the leaves. It looks so cute and it is really slowly starting to come along. So that is doing well. Look at those new leaves and new ones are coming. So awesome success on this as well. It will take a little bit of time for these to be big full plants, but I'm so happy. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you learn something new or just love this plant. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!